come to Cornwall in the south of England to see a man about a cog. Oh, there's quite a lot of metal. Wow, hello. Hello. Well, this is certainly not a desk job. At no. Least. It's definitely one of the more unconventional it's offices. Cold it's cold, but it's absolutely compelling. Rob, thanks for inviting us to your place. People are familiar with the term automata, but there's loads of different ways to describe what you do. How would you describe it? I describe it a um, mechanical sculptor or maker of contraptions, is generally. But it is really difficult to try to explain because, yeah. Usefully, because not that many people do it. <laughs> but yeah, automata maker or kinetic sculptor or mechanical sculpture is the general term. So the last, more oh, I guess, 10, 15 years now, it's been full time living. So yeah, just keep getting really fun jobs. Is this where you sit and think, or do you do this all in your head, or do you have a, a piece that jumps out Generally, at you? Yeah, a bit of both. I normally have a rummage here, get the bits, and either lay them out. <laughs> or lay them on the ground if it's a bigger piece, or just to kind of offer them up to each other to go, yeah, that would kind of work. Yeah. Or if I'm stuck, have a little tour around all the scrapyards and there's loads of old boat jumble shops and stuff where you can just have an inspiration from seeing the bits. I find it's very much, very much easier than trying to imagine it all. It's totally impossible to have pre-designed because mm -hmm. it entirely depends on what I find. What I have, but a lot more what I find. Yeah, look at this. Lovely, look at that emblem. I don't know what it is. Brass pumps. There's, there's my collar block. There's flange plates. Here's springs. Here's handles. Snapped off. If I look in my box of balls, larger shackles, smaller shackles. That's not a clevis. That's not a bottle screw. That's not a linkage. It's, so it's just so far it's going in that I give up. <laughs> it's an ongoing battle, I have to say. Ooh. There's an element of hermit, kleptomaniac, just surrounded with my treasure, though, isn't it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I worry. What are you working on? Um, today I'm working on making a submarine for a kid's playground, which is the job, for okay. the next few months. <laughs> and, and what's this bit going to be? This bit's the, um, one of the handles. There'll be a few bits they can interact with it. This one, they'll wind this handle, and that'll um, spin a load of gears inside. It'll spin this big kind of quarter of a ton prop out the top, propeller, shoot propeller out the top. And if you see a tractor in a playground, it will be bits of PVC. I find that really disappointing and sad that they're steered away from any reality <laughs> materials these days. So is there a reason you work mainly in bare metal for your sculptures? Possibly because I'm colour blind, so I'm not fussed about any difference in colours, so a mono brown, whatever it is, colour is fine, but it's more, it, it's not so much that, it's just that that's where all the beautiful things were made out of, they're all, that's, that's all iron. Mm. My dad's side of the family is all engineering, so I guess it's from there. As a kid I was very keen on some kind of engineering being the obvious direction, but um, yeah, not getting on with education at all. <laughs> You think, I'll be an engineer, I'll, I'll design trains. But the reality is, no, you'll be in a drawing room on your computer designing the axle. I feel so lucky to have found this job because it completely is against that whole, you don't have to be a grown up. <laughs> Back to my dad argument at some point, you know, you'll realise you can't make a living just making junk.